Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. What up? Holy guacamole, Batman. It is the Mountain West West. This is Winning Cures Everything. I'm Gary. I'm Chris. It's college football preview season, of course. We are in July at this point. We are pre-recording this. It is the end of June here when we are recording. Uh, but we've already gone through. We know what picks we're going to roll with. We know what we're doing. <laughs> or at least we're going to try and convince you of that. So, if you have any complaints about these picks, go over to winningcureseverything.com, follow us on YouTube, subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, etc., uh, and tell us about it. Leave some comments. Share it out with your buddies. Tell them we're idiots. Tell them we're geniuses. Whatever you want to do, we are here for you. So, uh, the Mountain West West is brought to you by BetNow.eu. Use promo code WINNING50, that's W-I-N-N-I-N-G-5-0, for those that can't understand my southern uh, drawl, I guess. Uh, but WINNING50 is your promo code for a 50% deposit bonus. Great online sportsbook, great layout, awesome spot for recreational gamblers. If you want to toss some money down on a game, this is your spot to do it online, on mobile, on whatever. Go sign up for an account and use promo code WINNING50. They'll give you 50% back of whatever you put in. So, Chris, how you feeling about the Mountain West uh, West? It Mountain is a West weird West? division. The Mountain West West. We're with. Uh, I like it. There are three of these teams I like a lot. I don't know if there's that many that I like a lot. Well, maybe I use the word like a little loosely. <laughs> two two of them I do like a lot, and then and then one of them I like. Okay, okay, I can get down with that. Um. Let's start off with Fresno State. This is a team I like a lot. The Fresno State Bulldogs. 12-2 and last year. 7-1 and in conference. They return exactly two offensive starters. Six on defense, though. Number 12, most experienced team in the Mountain West. That is dead last. That number is DFL. Oh, number 129 in the country. That is next to last. Correct. So, almost DFL. Uh, head coach Jeff Tedford, twenty-two and six in two seasons after he inherited a team that went three and nine and then one and eleven in twenty fifteen and twenty sixteen. So this was a remarkable Th- turnaround. This just in, he's really good. He's a good coach. He's he's really good. Yeah. Uh, new offensive coordinator Ryan Grubb, a former offensive line coach. Uh, look, they lose quarterback Marcus uh, McMarion. Uh, four out of five offensive linemen they lose. Their three top wide receivers they lose, uh, but they got some running backs back, so that's good. Number three, scoring defense in the country last year, 14.1 points per game from 2018. They uh, they have a deep and experienced front seven to lean on, so that's good. They got two starters back in the secondary. Quarterback Jorge Reyna is the supposed heir to the throne, but the position is wide open. Schedule, a little more difficult this year. Uh, So we don't know exactly who the quarterback is going to be. We think we know. Um, But, man, schedule, kind of tough this year. Uh and with a, not a lot of experience coming back, I don't think that 12-2 and two is doable this year. Agree. But I still got them as, as pretty good. I've got them at 8-4 and four this year. Okay. I got them 6-2 and two in conference. Here's the deal. I've got them losing at USC in, in the opening week. I got them losing to Minnesota in week two. Then you got a bye week. And then you got Sacramento State and at New Mexico State. So after you've had some, some rough openings. You get you to got, start your season. Yes, you get to really start your season. Get a couple checks, yep. and then you start your season. Then you got a bye week, and then you play at Air Force, which is a bruising, like you were going to get beat up in that game. That's right. And then after that, you get lucky. You got UNLV and in Colorado, Colorado State. Back to back. You got at Hawaii, which could be a tough one. That's right. Uh, then you got Utah State at home, so that helps. Then you got at San Diego State. I've got them losing that game. And then a win over Nevada, win over at San Jose State. So... I've got them losing to Air Force. I got them losing to San Diego State, and then at USC and Minnesota, winning everything else. Eight and four, I think, would be an absolutely remarkable year, due to the fact that I mean, they got nobody back. I know they got nobody back, but in Tedford, I trust. Well, like, it's, they've built a winning culture, I and I think say, eight and four is really these good. These guys that are coming in aren't aren't bums. I got them nine and three. I think they lose the first two non conference games. I don't know which of these conference games they lose. I don't think they're going to run through it undefeated with some inexperience or make some mistakes. That Air Force game is going to be tough. 
Hawaii is going to be tough. San Diego State, Utah State, my, my, uh, Nevada. Yeah. One of those games I think jumps up and bites him. I just feel like he's he's that much better a coach than everybody else in this conference. Ooh, I might this be, conference I'm, got a lot of good, uh, I know that. good coaches. I know that. I felt like four of these teams. I know. <laughs> but but I, I just think – who baby? I, I like yeah. I like him. A lot. I drink the Kool Aid. I'm in the tank, and and that's that's what I think. That's I'm I'm curious because they you remember I mean their defensive coordinator is a boss, and he left. But I don't remember if he left after last season or the season before. But last year's defense was fantastic. It Was really good. They didn't fall off. Yeah, at and all. So either way, like we'll see if they can keep this up. Uh, it will help out. Having the uh, that deep front seven, right on defense, so that's that's going to help out a lot. Keep you in a lot of games. You got that right. Uh, the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors, Hawaii, eight and six last year, really good. Nick Rolovich is fun boy. That's a five and three in conference last year. Offense returns eight guys. Defense returns nine starters. Number one most experienced team in the Mountain West, number four in the country. Look, Nick Rolovich, four, or 18 and 22 in three years. He's getting that swagger back. That What they had going on when June Jones was there, he's bringing that back. Look, they had the number nine passing offense last year. 310.3 yards per game. Uh, the first winning season down there since 2010. Could you believe that? Yeah, but they had a pretty good schedule last year too, though. Uh, they did. They did. I mean, they had, a, they had a couple of teams on that schedule that are on this year's. This is true. This is true. Um, but still, first winning season since 2010. No, no. That's inc- absurd. Nope. Incredible. You're right. Quarterback gonna... Quarterback Cole McDonald, I fell in love with this dude like in the middle of the second game. Re- really, I liked him in the first game, and then in the second game when they put up like 59 on Navy, at that point I was sold. Uh, look, he started 2018 on fire. He had 2,200 yards in the first like six games. Uh yeah, 22 touchdowns and only two interceptions. And then he got injured. But he's back. Like he's all good. Number 100 total defense. They returned nine starters, though, uh, including the entire secondary. That should be a big improvement. They only had 12 takeaways in 14 games last year. Not a good number. Got to improve that number. And, of course, the regression to the mean that we always talk about. Mm, that works with fumbles, not with interceptions. And that's true. You either that's got true. skill on the ball or you don't. Well, no, this was this was 12 takeaways. So this is just just turnovers, period. Okay. They only got 12 turnovers, period. Okay. When you say takeaways, uh, I think of interceptions. Schedule opens with three okay. Power 5 teams, but the conference schedule sets up kind of nicely, so they can end up with a pretty good season. Yeah, one of those Power 5 teams is kind of barely a Power 5 team. It, I'll tell you this. I do have them beating Oregon State, but Oregon State will be a lot better this year. I, that Coach Smith, I'm telling you, he's getting that program turned around. Okay. He's uh he is legit. But yes, so I've got them at seven and six this year. Because they, they play 13 games. I got them five and three in conference. Uh I've got a loss to Arizona to open things up, but I've got a win over Oregon State. I've got a loss at Washington, and then I got them beating both. Central Arkansas and at Nevada. I think they come back to the mainland and beat Nevada. At Boise State, I got a loss. Air Force and New Mexico, both are wins. Fresno State is a loss. San Jose State, UNLV, both wins. And then losses to San Diego State and Army at the end of the season. Puts them at 7-6. and six, Puts them in a bowl game. I mean, I, I think this will be a fun team. They're going to win some they're not supposed to. They're going to lose some that they're probably not supposed to. And... I, I think it's a I think it's a good team. I got them six and seven, and and I I, I was I was close to close five, to seven and six. I was close oh, to closer five to and five eight. and eight. I was close to five and eight. I could see that. I, I just I think the schedule works out tough. I think Arizona's tough. Washington's obviously tough. If Oregon State, they are a power five team. They recruit a little differently. If they can turn it around, they win that game. I think Nevada's hard. We know yeah. boys say. I think you lose that Air Force game, like Fresno State. San Diego State Army, like these are these are not easy wins at all. That's and true. I, and I just feel like you got a few of them that are that are going to be the easy ones. I think those are easy, but I think those are one, two, three, four wins that you can just say are going to be easy Ws. And then the rest are like they're not that they're going to lose all those games, but 
but they can end up losing it, more than they it win. It wouldn't surprise me if they lost all those games. Now that makes sense. So that's, that makes that's, sense. I, I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna stay at six and seven, but I I was really close to five and eight. The Nevada Wolfpack, eight and five last year, five and three in conference. Returning starters, they got four on offense, four on defense. Number nine most experienced in the Mountain West. So not good down there towards the bottom. Uh, number one twelve in the country. Again, not good. Not great. Head coach Jay Norvell, eleven and fourteen in two years. Look, he got his offense clicking last year. Number twenty four passing offense in the country. Had two hundred seventy eight point eight yards per game. They're returning both tackles, but they lost the entire interior of the offensive line. You know how important that is. That's a pretty big deal. Uh, Replacement for Ty Gangi, who is the quarterback, is just wide open. That's right. Like like four or five guys competing for that job. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. Um, But I will say, the so there are some people that think that the last chance you quarterback, Malik Henry, uh, that he is the one that's going to take this over. Uh, some are saying that it's going to be retro freshman Carson Strong, senior quarterback Christian Solano. Uh, it could be any one of them. And they will still all probably be pretty good because I think they all fit into this offense. I was about to say, I trust Jay. Like, yeah. like he's an offensive guy, and I think that he can replace his quarterback. Yeah. Um, I've, I've, I've watched his brother do it here in Memphis. Yeah. And every time we go for somebody who we think, man, that guy's not going to be replaceable, we're not that kind of school, you can't just run – a new guy, and it, it just kind of – Yeah. It seems to work out just fine. Um, I trust his offensive system. I like this guy. I like this team. Sophomore running back. Now, check this one. I don't, I'm probably going to murder this one. Give it, Toa, give it a good shot. Toa Tawa. T-A-U-A. So, T-O-A-T-A-U-A. Uh, this dude is an absolute star. Okay. I've, I've watched, I remember watching Nevada several times last year, typically with the mute button on. Because, of course, I had three or four different things set up to watch. Uh, and I did bet on them a lot because they were rolling points-wise. Uh, but, yeah, he's he's a star. He's going to be awesome. So keep an eye on him. Just two of their top seven tacklers return for the number 58 total defense. Defensive coordinator Jeff Castile, uh, his three three five was effective last year. I think the defense could actually improve a little bit, even losing, you know, uh, just a, a – Two of the top seven tacklers yeah. returning, um, but uh, again, tough schedule, like really difficult schedule. Uh, went eight and five last year. I think they fall back to the pack a little bit this year. I think the offense will still be able to click some, but not early. Uh, they open with Purdue and at Oregon. That's right. I got losses for both of those. You're not winning those games. I've got a win over Weber State, a win at UTEP, so that puts you back at two and two. Then a loss to Hawaii that puts you at two and three. But then, I think after the bye week, October 5th, they get the offense kind of figured out, right? A win over San Jose State. I think they upset Utah State on the road. I've got them losing at Wyoming because I think that that style can beat them. Um, A win over New Mexico, a loss at San Diego State, a loss at Fresno State, and a win over UNLV. That puts them at 6-6 and and get invited to one of the, the smaller bowls. So six and six, and then four and four in conference. Got them seven and five. One game better than you. Okay. So, I I I like Jay. I think they'll figure the offense out, and um, and they'll find another win in there somewhere. Yeah, that's totally reasonable. Totally reasonable. All right. Next up, San Diego State Aztecs. Here we go. Here we go. Another coach I really like a lot. Head coach Rocky Long. I really like a lot. Look, seven and six last year wasn't great. Four and four in conference. They got six starters back on offense, five on defense. Number 39 most experienced team in the country, but that's good for number three in the Mountain West. Look, Rocky Long, 71 and 35 in eight years. Uh, But last year was incredibly disappointing after they had three straight 10 win seasons. Offense, switching to a bit of a spread attack. They've got the quarterback in the backfield now, but Long is adamant that this is still going to be a run first team. So. You know they're they're going to attack with their running backs. That's his plan. Even if the quarterback is lined up in the backfield, senior middle linebacker. Now I, I am going to destroy this one. Kiava Tazino. He is the leader of this defense. They were number twenty one in total D last year. This guy had one hundred twenty seven tackles and eight and a half sacks. 
They got a lot of talent, but they are light on experience. They started 7-2 and two last year before they lost four straight. The schedule this year, uh, they have got all of their toughest conference games at home. I think it makes a significant difference. I think they get back to their 10-win ways. I got them 10-2 this year. Woo! I love this team. I like this team a lot. Now I don't have them that good. I've got them, I've got them eight and four. I've got them eight and four because I, I, there's a lot of other coaches I like in this conference. But uh, man, I would not be upset if they go ten and two. I've got them eight and zero in the conference. Oh wow! I think this is the revenge tour. I think Rocky Long was pissed off after last year. I, I mean, I like him. I'm a, oh, yeah. I'm a I'm a big. He's fan. an older. The only reason he has not gotten a a bigger job is oh, because yes. he's older. Because his age. That's it. Abs- absolutely. But uh, no question. I've got him losing at UCLA. I've got them losing at home in the last game of the year to BYU, uh, partly because that's one week after they have to go to Hawaii. But I think that they go eight and zero. I think at that point the BYU game, uh, they don't have to worry about that one because they're eight and zero and they're going to the Mountain West Championship game. Let so, me ask you this: They lose to UCLA, they beat BYU, and they run the rest of the table. Are they the highest Group of Five team? You think? Yes. Because nobody else finishes undefeated, we don't think. Yes, I think they will be. Like, the schedule isn't, like, the most difficult. I was about to say, right? you don't get any schedule points. But but you will end up playing probably Boise State in the Mountain West Championship game. Oh, yeah, if they if they win that, that would be different. Yeah. That's right, because I'm not looking at that on the schedule. But, yeah, I mean, but that, you would it, have wins over Fresno. You'd have wins over Nevada. You'd have, I mean, uh, you know. Well, this is, I mean, listen, a win at home over Utah State. Utah State. I was just about to say, those are three decent wins. Like, listen to the road schedule. This is this is just ridiculous. At New Mexico State, and so at at UCLA and at New Mexico State early. Mm -hmm. But then their conference schedule is at Colorado State, at San Jose State, uh, at UNLV, and at Hawaii. They got Fresno, Nevada, uh, Wyoming, and Utah State all at home. I understand. I just don't know that you could just chalk up W's to all those. Just because you're playing them at home doesn't mean that you can win them all. I'd I'd no, love I'd, to see I, it. I'm with you. I, I won't be upset if it happens. I'd, but I'd, I'd, I would absolutely love to see it. Come I, on. I think this team is – I think they're fantastic. I think they're mad about how things went last year. I'm all over them. San Jose State. Let's move on to the Spartans. The San Jose State Spartans, 1-11 last year, 1-7 in conference – Six returning starters on offense, five on defense, number four most experienced in the conference, number 40 in the country. Head coach Brett Brennan, 3-22 and 22 in his last two years. He's getting no support from the school whatsoever, but this year he's still got to show some improvement, right? Like, isn't that the way this thing goes always? It's like, we're not going to help you, but you better do better, or we're not going to be able to help you out here. We're not, you know... Uh, Fifth-year senior quarterback Josh Love is back. He has progressed each season. That's a good thing. Uh, that he should be able to take some pressure off the defense this year, I would think. Uh, top two tacklers are back. Defensive line has nine rotational guys, maybe for the first time ever. Defense should improve from the number 115 scoring defense in the country. It's hard to get much worse than that. Um, not a lot of opportunities for wins on the schedule, but anything more than one is an improvement. Right? And so I've got them at two and ten. I don't have them improving. <laughs> so here's so so there's a lot of there's a lot of things you've said in there that can be I go through and try and hype this team up and twist, you're like no. no. Can be twisted. I almost gave them the goose egg. No. Woo. But they got the one still. Here's the deal. How could you give them the goose egg? I didn't. Egg? I didn't. I said I almost did. I know, but they got Northern Colorado I, on the schedule. Like anything it. can happen. Listen, I know you said their top two <laughs> tacklers are coming back. Well, but if those guys are bad, no, you're just right. because they're the top two coming back, that doesn't mean anything. The 115 in the country, yeah, they could improve. They could improve to 101 in the country and, and still, still be, be the bad. worst defense in the conference. Like, they're so far behind everybody in so many different metrics. Yes, their quarterback has improved every year, but he's but he's also winning one two games a year. So, I mean, they 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 do have a brutal schedule. The schedule's not good, and and they're they're not good. I mean, they, so they're Northern just, Colorado they're just not good at football, which is tough because that's what they do for yeah. They've got they Northern go, Colorado to start. They, they got Tulsa. After that, Tulsa comes into town, but I think Tulsa. Oh know, yeah, even even not good Tulsa. 
will still probably beat them at home. They got to buy, and then you got to go at Arkansas, at Air Force, New Mexico at home, who I have them beating, uh, at Nevada, San Diego State, at Army, Boise State, at Hawaii, by week at UNLV, and then Fresno State. I think they'll find a win. I'm I'm not really sure who I'm willing to. I mean, that may be the most difficult schedule in the conference. Maybe. Yeah, maybe but, not. But maybe, maybe not. that's because they're just really bad, though. Yeah, I think that has a lot if to do Fresno with it. If Fresno State had that schedule, would you say it's that's like, the most difficult schedule like, in the I gotta, conference? i got to put my brain into San Jose State and think, okay, this is what it's like being that team against these teams. That's right. But then if you're having Fresno State and you're like, yeah, okay, that's reasonable. If like, San Diego they, State had that schedule, you wouldn't think it's really hard. If Fresno had that schedule. Oh, it's still pretty hard. Yeah, but it's not. I mean, listen to that run, man. At Nevada, San Diego State, at Army, Boise State, at Hawaii. Like, just that five-game slate right there. It's like, that, that's a tough five-game slate. And but here's the now, deal. Now, at Army is the non-conference game, but it's like. There's nobody man. else you could put in those spots that are conference games that would, be that would any make different. it any easier. No, you're right. You're right. I mean, you can't play New Mexico every week. That's You like, are. Like, there's a couple of bottom feeder teams. In in it, you're just not allowed to play UNLV in New Mexico every week. Now you you got a point there. You got a point there. All right, let's wrap this up. UNLV, the Rebels went four and eight last year, two and six in the conference. Offense returned seven guys, five starters back on defense. Number five most experienced in the conference. Number sixty one in the country. Head coach Tony Sanchez enters year five with a sixteen and thirty two record. He needs to get to a bowl game. The AD came out and basically said, we're looking forward to a successful season with a bowl game. I don't think that's what you want to hear from your AD. I'm looking forward to a lot of things. Yeah. Tony Sanchez was a revered local high school coach that won state championship after state championship. He's fantastic at that. But they they said, okay. They they did the, the Penny Hardaway thing before Memphis did, Right. Brought him in, said, all right, this is your program. You run it the way that you see fit. But four years and 16 and 32, that's not a good thing. Quarterback Armani Rogers, pretty good. He's he's coming back with nine offensive line uh, players with starting experience. Nine. That's pretty impressive, right? That also means ain't nobody consistent. So that's not a good thing. Uh, the offense has not been the problem, though, no. with UNLV. They just can't stop anybody. Number 120 scoring defense. They got quality depth at linebacker. They got some talent on defensive line. See, they there's should words improve. around like quality depth. And I just that's, don't know that that's How right. about this? They got depth at linebacker. They got a lot of people that can play linebacker. Yes. They, they should improve their numbers because they are better as far as talent, as far as depth, as far as experience goes. They're better as, at, at all of that than they were last year. But, I mean, it, they the numbers need to be way better. Like, number 120 in scoring defense is awful. So, the schedule, uh, for them to make their first bowl in, you know, forever, uh, is ridiculous. They would need nothing short of a miracle. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's impossible. It's... Uh, here, I'll run through it. I've got them at two and ten. I got them one and seven in conference. I got them. I got them three and nine. That's even. That's reasonable. But that's that's, that's, that's still, still going to cost him his job. Yeah, I was about to say. Yeah, he's uh, still losing the job. A win over Southern Utah to open things up. Everything looks peachy. UNLV <laughs> one and zero. Oh, everything's great. And then Arkansas State comes to town. Loss. Yep. At Northwestern. Loss. A bye week, which is hey, after getting your brains beat in a couple of times, you might need to kind of recuperate. We're going to come out. We're going to Wyoming. Loss. Nope. Boise State, loss. At Vanderbilt, loss. At Fresno, loss. San Diego State, loss. After that bashing, then you got at Colorado State, which you would think, okay, maybe there's a reasonable chance, except Colorado State at that point is going to be desperate. So, loss. A bye week. Then you got Hawaii at home, loss. And then... Our old pals, San Jose State, are coming to town. And I've got a win for UNLV over San Jose State. I, I got that as well. But then a loss at Nevada to close things out in the uh, whatever rivalry they want to call that yeah. between UNLV and Nevada. 
So two and ten, one and seven in conference. Uh, I think this is the last year that we see Tony Sanchez on the sidelines. And next year we have a brand new coach in the Raiders. Uh, or is it, is it twenty twenty when it opens up? I don't know. They, so, they but that's keep, that's where you and OB. You you know they're charging like forty thousand dollars for suites at yeah. that thing. That was pretty impressive. I was like, this is a big time football program. Then it won't be as easy to sell if they're two and ten. I mean, maybe you get like a fifty percent closeout deal. Like, <laughs> you think the Raiders could like somehow put Gruden's contract in with like, hey, you also have to coach this other team for ten million dollars a year? You know, it'd be funny if if they got somebody like Jack Del Rio. Like, if the Raiders were like, you know, we're paying you anyway. Why don't we just help out the local? College? Help out the local guys. <laughs> like, we're paying your buyout for the next few years anyway. Yeah. Like, it, come on. Come on back, and you can just coach in the same stadium. It'll be great. Because you were looking forward to going to Las Vegas anyway. Boom. I don't know. What, what do you got them, three and nine? I got them three and nine. There's, there's no way they get to a bowl game, is there? Oh, no. No, I mean, I, like I said, I, I just think – I mean, you're talking miracle. Yeah. Yeah. All right. find six wins on here. Tony Sanchez, it was a good run. And it really wasn't that good. It really wasn't. But, but – we're glad you gave it everything you got, and that was impressive, if nothing else. So, is this, is this a case of overpromotion? Yeah. Great high school coach. Maybe shouldn't have taken that jump. That's right. Either Pro- way. Promote it to a point of failure. You got it. You Boom. got it. All right, so that's going to wrap up the Mountain West West, which just sounds awesome. The Mountain West West. Go over to winningcureseverything.com. We got everything else up there. We're going to have all of our college football previews throughout the year. Make sure you subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify. Leave some nice five-star written reviews. We do appreciate that. That supports the show. It gets us in front of more people. Make sure you comment on YouTube. Comment on the website, wherever. Uh, Share it out. Tell your buddies about it. We appreciate you being here. We will see you guys next go-round. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.